What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. I hope you're all doing well. Now in this video we're going to be talking about woodworking hand tools. So we're going to go through this lovely backdrop that I have behind me here and all my woodworking hand tools. Um, you may think that you need all this but you absolutely do not. So what I want to try and cover in this video is hand tools I think you're going to need. I'm going to go through my hand tools, show you what I use, show you what I don't use, show you what I actually regret spending my money on and things that I never use. And what we'll do is we'll strip out all the tools out of this cabinet that I don't use and you can see the before and after. And it should help some of you guys out, especially if you're thinking about getting into the hobby of woodworking or you're already starting your journey through woodworking and you want to start making some hand to woodworking projects. What do you actually need and where should you spend your money? So let's jump in and do that. Now before we jump in and look at all these hand tools, I just want to thank the sponsor of today's video and that is Tradeify. Now Tradeify is a complete job management platform aimed at all you trades people out there. So there's over 20,000 uh, trades people all over the world using Tradeify and I'm one of them. I use it every day in my day job as an electrician. I'm a self-employed electrician. I've been doing that for over 15 years and I found Tradeify to be absolutely fantastic and that's why I don't mind recommending it to you guys. So it's a complete job management platform like I said aimed at trades people. It's all your administration in one place. It's desktop and mobile based, so it's iOS and Android, so you can carry your office in your pocket with you on site. And believe me, if you're on your tools all day, uh, working for yourself then doing the office work can be quite difficult. So everything from invoicing to quoting for jobs, for scheduling jobs, a complete client database, it's all there in one place on Tradeify. Really good looking professional documents, it makes it simple to generate. Now, one of the really nice things I like about it is when you're quoting for jobs. So you can really see where all your costs are, you can see how much you're charging for materials, what profits on your materials, what you're charging for labor, what profits on your labor. You can see all the little details and it makes sure that you're charging enough for those jobs. And if the quotation is successful, all you have to do is click make the job from the quotation. It immediately populates all that information from your quotation into the job. When a job is complete, you can then generate an invoice straight away from what's in the job. Send that to your client, you can have dates on it for when the invoice is due, you can set up automatic reminders so it will automatically remind your client when the payment is due, it does all that for you and you can just check it anytime you want right here on your phone. Makes it super simple to track all your invoices which is great. So definitely check it out if you're in the trades it will make your office work so much easier. There is a promo code man and shed which will give you 50% off for your first three months and and there's a 14 day free trial, no strings attached. So you don't have to enter any credit card details or anything like that. You can go along, play around for 14 days with the full job management platform and see if you like it. Trust me, you will. It will remove so many office work headaches from you and allow you to concentrate on the job and on the tools. So definitely check it out guys. All links will be in the description. And uh, thanks again for Tradeify for sponsoring the video. Now let's get on with the tools. Okay, let's crack on and talk about these hand tools. Now, I'm aiming this video at you guys who are hand tool woodworkers getting into hand tool woodworking and you want to make nice little projects like these. So some of Matt Esley's projects here, like the, the cabinet, the toolbox, uh, you want to do stuff like make, maybe making dovetails, miter dovetails, inlaid dovetails, nice little box like this, little Japanese toolbox, all that kind of stuff that I've made on my channel already. So. To you guys, if you're getting into hand tool woodworking, what do you need to actually make projects like this? So we're gonna have a look at that now. Now a little caveat before we jump in as well, I would never dissuade you guys from buying tools. I'm a tool-aholic, um, I love tools, I love collecting tools, so it's not a case of me lecturing you saying don't buy stuff, it's just to kind of give you guys an idea of what's behind me here and what I use and what I don't use, where you should spend your money and where I think you shouldn't spend your money and what I actually regret buying. So that's the work purpose of this video. So when you guys understand that, we should be Good. Now let's get to the tools. Okay, so let's start with marking and measuring. We need some way of marking out all these joints and all these woodworking projects. So we're going to have to spend a little bit of money here. So what do I use and what I don't use? And what I'll do is I'll remove all the tools that I don't use out of this cabinet and we'll see at the end and then we'll go through on the table the tools that I actually do use. So let's start. This speed square, again for hand tool woodworking, I don't ever use that. The larger squares, they almost never get used either. They're just tools that I have that I put in there. 
these type marking gauges, so the pin and blade type marking gauges, really don't like these. That never gets used. I use the wheel type, which we'll get in a second. The engineer square, yes, I love those. I use those the whole time, especially the small one when it comes to doing little dovetail joints and stuff like that, when the large square is too big for the piece that you're working on. So that stays in there. The sliding square, yes. Sliding bevel, yes. Protractor, very handy. All these rulers, um, I never use these guys, so they can go out of there. Uh, the Shiwa rulers, very, very handy. I use those rulers all the time. They're not very expensive, but they're highly accurate, really nice and very clear to read. So yes, for the Shiwa rulers. Dovetail markers, use them all the time as well. I have a one in eight and a one in six, the Veritas ones. Um, like them, they're not very expensive. Dividers, um, I don't use these guys that often. So one six inch dividers is all you need really. So we can get rid of them. Um, this Shiwa square, I found this to be absolutely fantastic and it's really, really cheap. So yes, I use that a lot. That stays in there. A marking knife, um, essential um, to woodworking, I believe is a good marking knife. That's Matt Hesley's one. So get yourself a good marking knife. I've already done a video on this one. It helps you to be extremely accurate. So, marking gauges, my favorite one is the Veritas wheel type marking gauge. I think these are absolutely fantastic and are not overly expensive. And I think they're one of the best on the market. So get yourself one of those. Two marking gauges is quite handy, but not necessary. So what we'll do is get rid of the other two. We don't need them in there either. This stuff can all go, we don't need that. So yeah, that's basically it for what I use to mark out my woodworking projects. Nice and simple. Okay, let's move over then and have a look at my hand saws. Now I did some videos on hand saws, like Japanese hand saws and stuff before. I think Japanese hand saws are absolutely fantastic. Um, saws are really good quality and they're really not expensive. So if you're getting into woodworking and you're looking for some good hand saws, definitely check out the Japanese hand saws. You can get a set, you can have like the dovetail saw, a cross cut saw and a cross cut and rip saw all in one. Now I'm a big fan of these saws, but I actually get on better with the Western saws. So with these two, the Dazuki saw and um, I forget the Kataba saw, they are not getting uh, as much use as they used anymore. So I don't need these. The Ryoba saw, which is both the cross cut and rip saw all in one, this still, still does get used, so we're keeping this guy, but these guys can go. Now next up in here is a saw. Now this is kind of a one that I kind of regret buying. Now this was actually a present. Um, my wife got me some vouchers for Workshop Heaven for my 40th birthday and I really wanted a bad axe saw because they're absolutely beautifully made, handmade saws, really, really nice. This is a large tenon saw. Now I've almost never used it. I had planned on building a new workbench this year. I thought this was going to be coming in very handy, especially for cutting the legs, but I kind of it for that one purpose. It's a very expensive saw. It doesn't get used a lot. A smaller um, tenon saw or even cross cut saw would have been a better use of my money. So beautiful, absolutely beautiful saw. If you have the money to buy bad axe saws, I would never tell you not to buy them, but make sure you get the ones you need. This was a bit of a, yeah, maybe a purchase that I shouldn't have made. It never gets used. So I'm going to put this aside for now. Okay, moving on then, this little saw here, this was one that I needed. It doesn't get used too much. This is a fret saw, so I used to build some guitars. I use this for fret work. Again, I'm not building guitars anymore, so you can see, go see it in there. It's not being used, so I'm gonna set it aside for the purposes of this video. Next up then is my Veritas saws. So I have two rip saws and one cross cut saw. I would say get the cross cut saw, get the 20 or the 14, sorry, TPI um, rip saw for doing your dovetails, the fine tooth rip saw. You don't really need it. It does give you a little bit of a finer cut. It's not necessary. Just these two saws are my recommendations. Um, again, if you don't want to spring to this kind of money, then by all means, get the Japanese saws. But I get on really great with these, so they're the only two saws I need. Okay, so moving on with the saws, I have a little small flush cut saw here. Again, not very expensive, comes with the Japanese saw kit. And uh, yeah, I do use this quite a bit for flushing off dowels and that kind of thing. It's very, very handy, very cheap. So it's a nice little one to have. So I'm gonna keep that one 
in there just like that now a coping saw is essential but you don't have to spend uh, that much money and buy a new concept coping saw a nice cheap and handy coping saw will do it's the blade not the saw that makes the difference these are really nice they're super lightweight easy to change the blade uh, really nicely designed um, a really nice tool but this one will do just as well with a good blade in it and you need that for cutting out your dovetails so the coping saw will stay so we've kind of whittled down all our saws. The tool cabinet is starting to look a little bit more bare. Let's move on to the hand planes. Okay, so we're moving on to the planes. We're gonna start with the bench planes and then we get into the speciality planes uh, first. So what do I use? What don't I use? What's just up here for show? So um, you guys will know I'm a big fan of Quang Sheng planes. I think they're one of the best planes on the market for the money. Um, if you can't get Quang Sheng or if you can't stretch to that kind of level, then I always recommend second-hand Stanleys are a good way to go, especially the older Stanleys. Once you tune them up, you'll have yourself some great hand planes. Now, what do I use? What don't I use? Well, let's start with my biggest plane. This is my Quang Sheng number seven. Uh, this is one I bought second-hand. Um, great plane. Do I use it a lot? No. Uh, it's good for jointing large boards and stuff like that or preparing stock. I don't do a whole lot of big stock when I'm working on small projects. Now remember, I'm aiming this video at guys who want to build small projects like this, like the tool cabinet, the toolbox, little boxes, that kind of thing. You will not need a big jointer plane, so that can go. Now, starting down this end, I'll get to the jack planes now in a second. These are my Stanleys. These are really old Stanleys. Some of them are sweetheart era Stanleys. That's why I bought them, kind of a collector's item. They're never, ever used. So I have my Stanley number three. This is a sweetheart, it actually still has a sweetheart blade in it. Again, a really nice collector's piece. Do I use it? Do I need it? No, I don't. Moving on up, I have another sweetheart Stanley. Again, made in America, 19, I'm not sure, 1910 I think this one is from, 1910 to 1920, something like that. So it's over 100 years old. Uh, really nice little collector's piece again. Do I need it? No, I don't. Another couple of Stanleys, this is a made in England one. It's a nice one that I had left over. I bought 20 Stanley planes uh, about a year or two ago, did them all up and then sold them on. Made absolutely no money on it whatsoever and put hundreds of hours into tuning them all up. And that was just one of the good ones I had left over. Again, don't use it, don't need it. Uh, Stanley number four and a half, again, another sweetheart era, made in America Stanley, collector's piece. Don't use it, don't need it. Let's keep going. Uh, it's getting kind of scarce in here now. Okay, so the tool cabinet is really starting to tin out now, so you can kind of get an idea of what's essential and what's not essential, what's just for show and what's just nice to collect. Now, this is the next jack plane that I have here. This is a wooden jack plane. I made it with the Veritas um, plane kit. Uh, I really like it, but I never use it. I really enjoyed making it. I actually have a build video of this. I love how it turned out. Um, I think it looks really good, but again, I never use it. Really fun to make. I really love it. I would never get rid of it, but I never use it. It's just you know, it's a nice showpiece. So that goes as well. Now, the jack planes. This is where I would, if I can only have one plane, it would be the jack plane. Now I started off with the Lloyd Nielsen low angle jack plane because you can do so much with them. Um, but ever since I got the Quang Sheng number five, this guy hasn't been used a whole bunch. You don't really need a low angle jack plane if you can really sharpen your um, standard angle jack bench planes. Um, a low angle plane is not necessary. So sad to say it, I love this plane. It's absolutely beautiful, but it's not getting used that much. So if I had to strip everything back down to what I use and what I don't use, then the low angle plane is going to go. Now, I have two jack planes left. Um, this is a standard, this is the five and a half. The five and a half is one of my most recent purchases. And you guys will have seen the video if you're following my channel of how to take a plane from the box to a fully working plane. I did it with this number five and a half. I've been using the number five jack plane up onto that point. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, what a great plane. And it's been doing everything from jointing to, to planing boards, to preparing stock, to finishing, all that kind of stuff. You can do it all with one plane. However, I bought the five and a half. I'm a big fan of Rob Cosman and he swears by the five and a half. And I have to say, I absolutely agree with him. Everything since I bought this number five and a half, Quang Sheng, it's the only plane that I'm really using. I'm using it from everything from preparing stock to jointing stock to finishing. Um, 
with the shooting board, the extra weight is absolutely fantastic. So the number five and a half, if you've got slightly bigger hands as well, you can actually get them onto the five and a half. I can just get a kind of a three finger grip onto it. Uh, this five is a little bit smaller. So a jack plane, either a five or a five and a half is all you need. And all I'm really using at the minute is the number five and a half. So that guy can go back in. Where does he go? He goes there. And that is my bench planes. Okay, so we're moving on to the kind of speciality planes now. So what do I use and what I don't what don't I use? I suppose the two that I will go for is the two that I made. Again, I really like them. Some of the first videos I actually did on my channel. So I made a little block plane um, that was just made from scrap. I took an old blade from an old block plane and made that. Works quite well, but I never use it. The other one I made was the kind of poor man's um, rebate plane. Again, you just stick a chisel in this, works really well, has an adjustable fence on it as well. Made a video on how to make one of these. Again, doesn't get used, so it's nice to have. I'm never going to throw it out because it's one of the first things I made on my channel, but again, it's not getting used, so it has to go. Now, block planes. Do you need them? Not necessarily. Um, the little apron plane I will keep. I do like using this for just putting little chamfer details on the edge of some of the boxes. So yes, a little small plane like this can be quite handy. And this little apron plane is quite good. So I'm gonna keep that one. The low angled rebate plane. Is this necessary? It's quite a handy little tool, especially for getting into corners, but there's nothing you can do with this that you can't do with a chisel and a paring block and a really sharp chisel and a really flat a square planing block. You can do so much with it. You'll have seen me do it in my Japanese joint making um, videos. It's all done with chisels and saws. So yeah, this guy is not actually necessary. So he goes. Now, I have another two planes here. I have the little plow plane from Quang Sheng and I have the Veritas router plane. And I have to say guys, this is an absolutely fantastic tool, the Veritas router plane, but I almost never use it. Again, there's nothing I can do with this that I can't do with a pairing block set up properly and some sharp chisels. <laughs> Sorry to say it, but there is some instances where a router plane is kind of the best plane for the job. But like I said, they're seldom a case that you can't do with a chisel that you can do with this. So this guy almost never gets used. So he has to go as well. Now, my little Quang Shang plow plane, I'm keeping this guy. I love this little plane. You'll have seen me talk about this and use this in multiple videos. You can use this as a rebate plane and also as a plow plane. And it's essential if you wanna make little boxes and stuff like that, especially for doing dados and rebates and making lids and putting in bases into boxes and all that good stuff. One of these is absolutely fantastic. You could do it with a sauna chisel, but but this just makes it so much easier and it works so well and it's not overly expensive. So a little plow plane, for me personally, for my hand tool woodworking, this is an essential little bit of kit, so that stays. So there we go. That is uh, basically all the planes. Now the two ones that I bought recently were the spoke shaves. I did really need these. So spoke shaves are great working on dowels, uh, stock curves that kind of thing i think spoke shades are kind of essential i did buy these because i really needed them and they are being used so a flat bottom and a curved bottom spoke shave i would say yes for my woodworking that i'm doing i need these but uh, yeah there we go that's all that's left of my planes Okay, moving over to this part of the tool cabinet where all my chisels and my mallets and hammers are. Now, again, it's gonna be a case to strip everything out of here because I don't need most of what's in here. Uh, it's just some tools I have collected over the years. Um, this big mallet I turned and made, I really like it. Never gets used. It's more of a showpiece than anything. This is another mallet, an angle mallet that I do really like using. Um, I like the kind of fly, five degree splay in the head. It's really nice. Uh, it's actually weighted with some lead. It's nice to use at times. It doesn't get used a whole lot. But um, yeah, I'm gonna say I don't actually need it. So I'm gonna put that down there as well. These two hammers, again, don't ever use them. This is a fretting hammer from Crimson Guitars. I'm not making guitars that much anymore. Is it essential to my hand tool woodworking? No, not a little ball peen hammer. Doesn't get used that much. Doesn't need to be in the tool cabinet, really. So the hammer that I use almost all the time is this. This is a, one of the, a Tor hammer. I love these hammers. They make really great hammers. It's a kind of hard face and a soft faced um, hammer. So you have a kind of rubber and a hard plastic on this side. I use this with my chisels the whole time. I find that absolutely fantastic. It does almost 99% of all my hammering jobs are done with this one hammer slash mallet. So that's it. That's the only one that needs to be up there, really. 
Okay, moving on down, let's talk about foils, rasps, and all that good stuff. Well, I very, very seldom use these. These are hand-stitched rasps, rasps from Workshop Heaven. Again, two beautiful tools, but very rarely used, so they can actually step outside of the cabinet. Um, the all, yes, I do use the all every now and again. It's a handy little tool, just for being accurate. It has a little punch for when you're drilling holes, and all is almost ha very handy. Um, this. The Japanese Shinto rasp, you guys will see me wax lyrical about this loads and loads of times. That's absolutely staying in. It's an absolutely fantastic tool for uh, shaping and removing material in a hurry. Um, there's another mallet I have down here. Uh, absolutely beautiful mallet. But uh, do I need it? No, do I love using it? Yes. Um, but I'm gonna stick to what's exactly essential and the Thor hammer, so I'll get rid of this. Now, moving on to chisels. Uh, let's see, so these were my original chisels. They are my Stanley's really cheap set of chisels. You can get away with them, not great. You can put a good edge on them, but the sides on them are very, very thick. So these guys are going to go. Although it's always handy to have a rough chisel that you don't mind doing some rough work with. So uh, we might keep one of those in the tool box. Now, moving down here, these are my good chisels. So I recently bought some Japanese chisels. Love them, absolutely fantastic. Um, but if I could only have one set of chisels, it would be these. These are my Ashley Oils cabinet makers chisels. So a good set of cabinet makers chisels will do everything that you need to do when it comes to hand tool and woodworking. They are beefy enough that you can hit on them and their sides are also thin enough that you can get into the corners of your dovetails. Whereas the sides on the Japanese chisels are that bit thicker. So um, not good for getting into the corner of the dovetails, although they are absolutely beautifully made, razor, razor sharp chisels, lovely to use. But for doing an all purpose job, I think the cabinet makers chisels are definitely the way to go. So these guys can get out of there as well. So there we go. That's what's left in that door. Okay guys, so there you go. There's a more accurate representation of what I actually need and use 99% of the times. Sometimes I might need some of the other tools, but it is very rare. And you can build everything that I've shown you at the start of this video with what I have there, and they are used all the time. Now, I still have the bit and brace kind of in here. Um, Again, do you need this? Well, if you're doing dowels and stuff and you want to be purely hand tools and no power tools or anything like that, if that's what you're into, then you probably will need to get yourself one of those. However, I would say almost 99% of you guys watching will probably have yourself a little drill like this and there's nothing wrong with putting a bit in this and using it. So do you have to run out and buy yourself a bit and brace? Not necessarily, although you can pick them up absolutely cheap. So if you wanna be a purely hand tools, then maybe I'll leave this in here just as a, I suppose, just with a caveat that you can absolutely get away with one of these. But if you wanna be pure hand tools, you will have to get yourself one of those. So there we go, guys. Now, let me just get all these tools out on the table. I'll show you what you're gonna to need to use with them. Uh, sharpening is a place where I recommend you spend your money. So I'll give you a quick look at what I use to sharpen. And uh, yeah, we'll kind of draw a conclusion to this video. Okay, very quickly, let's just mention sharpening. Um, if you're gonna be getting into woodworking, sharpening is a fundamental skill that you're gonna to have to develop. But sharp is not sharp enough when it comes to sharpening your hand planes and your chisels. You have to keep them razor sharp. It makes it so much easier and will get you much more accurate and better results. So I use a scary sharp sharpening system. I got it from Workshop Heaven. Again, this is not a sponsored or paid for video. I bought this with my own money, um, but I really like it. It's just float glass with the 3M tape on it. You can sharpen absolutely everything on it, including the Japanese chisels. You can't sharpen Japanese chisels on a diamond stone because of the two metals that they use, but you can absolutely do it on this. Do your plain blades, I like to sharpen by hand. I have full videos, multiple videos, on sharpening and the tools that I use, so if you wanna check those out, I won't get into it in this video, but I recommend you put some money into a decent sharpening system. It will pay off in the long run. If you can sharpen quick and easy, then it makes your woodworking so much easier and saves you so much time, so it's definitely an area to put in some money. I had, up until that point, been using the Veritas honing guide system again a full video on this if you're not good at hand sharpening get yourself a little honing guide and uh, yeah i think the veritas honing guide system is pretty good it has some issues but again i have a full video on that so that's going to be a honing guide and a sharpening system and you are happy days 
Okay. Anyways, so there you go. That is exactly what I use 99% of the time for my woodworking. I could exist with just those hand tools and continue to make all the projects that I make on my channel. So again, seeing this nice, lovely backdrop behind me might give you guys some false impressions that you actually need all those tools. You don't. This is what I need. Now, it might be slightly different for you. You guys might be into building different things. You might need an extra tool here or there. But as a core set to start out with, this is what you need. So marking and measuring tools, essentially, you're going to have to have them. When it comes to saws, I recommend get a Ryoba saw rip and cross cut this will go through anything um, large boards no problem you can do long rips with it absolutely no problem there's no spine on it so this can go straight through everything like i said and you can cut through any length of board great saw and not extensive a cross cut saw and a rip saw doing your dovetails and cross cutting all your pieces you are sorted you can do large tenons with this guy too like i said i didn't really need to buy that big tenon saw a, a coping saw for cutting out your dovetails and stuff like that and shapes you will need one of those little flush cut saw not essential you can actually do your flush cutting with this so uh, i like to use it so that's why it's in there when it comes to rasps japanese saw rasp it does absolutely everything i need a little all um, like I said, hammers and chisels. This tore hammer does absolutely everything. I only need one of them and that will work with my chisels and just about everything else. When it comes to the chisels, I recommend get yourself a set of six cabinet makers chisels, a good set. Um, everything from 25 mil down to four mil or three mil. So that's like uh, an inch down to an eighth of an inch in the set. That will do absolutely everything you need them to do. Uh, having a, a kind of a rough chisel as well, just for doing some rough work is always handy. So we'll throw that in there cause it's not expensive. Over to the planes then I have two spoke shaves around and a flat bottom. I have a number five and a half that will do absolutely everything I need to do. My plow plane, um, I definitely love this thing. It gets used a hell of a lot, especially in all my box making. So yes, that stays in there. And a little apron plane, just for doing some detailed work around the edges where the number five and a half is too big. And then a sharpening system, whatever one you decide to go for, get yourself a decent one because you need to keep your tool sharp. That's essential, there's no way around it. And you would be good to go. So. That is a more accurate representation of my hand tools. What's behind me is really just for show. That's what I use. So oh, there you go. Okay guys, so there you go. Hopefully you've enjoyed that video and hopefully you've got something out of it. Now I just wanted to make this video just to give you guys a real representation of actually what's needed. Um, like I said, most of the tools that I have in here are nice to haves, they're not have to haves. And again, I would never dissuade any of you guys from buying tools. I love tools, that's why I buy them. I will buy more, I know I will. But that's really all I need. Sometimes maybe looking at that, I think it might be off-putting maybe for some people starting out woodworking to think, oh God, I need to get all those tools. You really don't. You can make, like I said, everything that I showed you at the start of this video you can, and much, much more with just what I have there. That's really all you need. And spend your money in these areas. Good jack plane, you know, good set of chisels, a good sharpening system. And that's where you need to spend your money and you will be golden. So yeah, like I said, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed that. Now I'll roll in a before and after shot so you can see the tool cabinet as it is and as it was before and it'll give you a good idea of just exactly what's needed. So again, I made the video to kind of maybe as inspiration for any of you guys who are thinking about getting into woodworking, maybe you're watching this channel and you think, oh God, I'd love to have that workshop and I need all that stuff. But remember, this is 20 years worth of work for me, this workshop uh, didn't happen overnight, uh, you know, so don't let that put you guys off. You can work towards it. You can build your toolbox according as you go and buy tools as you need them. But this is where you put your money, those few tools. And like I said, you can do 99% of what I do in my workshop. So that's it guys, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you have comments and questions below. What tools are essential to you? What could you strip out of your toolbox? What must you keep in your toolbox? If your uh, decisions are different to mine, be sure to let me know in the comments. I'm always uh, fascinated to see what you guys are doing as well. So that's it guys, I'm gonna get out of here now. I shall see you in the next one, take it easy.